the establishment and anti-establishment seem to agree that that is the case. So you have this phrase that I hear from politicians, the establishment, that we have to fight for peace. Now, of course, anyone remotely sane knows that you have to peace for peace. If you want peace, then we have to be peaceful. But no, no, not to the establishment and the element I'm talking about today of the so-called anti-establishment. No, if you want peace and you want justice and you want fairness, you have to have violence to achieve it. So, we have the establishment dropping bombs on the innocent across the Middle East, places like Libya, to bring about peace, to get rid of a violent dictator, to protect the innocent from violence while pepper bombing them from the sky. This, this is apparently how you achieve peace. Now, as I've been exposing for decades, those that are behind the establishment globally and want to fight for peace while destroying it, they are completely bloody insane. Completely mad. So you can explain away the insanity of mass violence in pursuit of peace and protecting people from violence. You, I mean, you can understand it because they're mad. But then... <clears throat> You look at the anti-establishment, or that element, like I say, I'm talking about today, who were on display yet again at the G20 summit in Hamburg, Germany. They think that the way to challenge the violence, not just physical violence, the violence in um, financial um, injustice, the violence in food distribution injustice, the violence in opportunity injustice, in, in um, housing injustice. They think the way to, 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 to challenge that is still more violence. And they claim to be anti-establishment. They claim to be the opposite of that which they oppose. But it's been plain as day to me for a very long time that this left-right um, polarity is a complete illusion in terms of what the situation really is. We are told that you have the establishment on the right, who are behind the, the wars and all these other forms of violence I've listed. And then on the left, you have the people that oppose them. And so if you take this left-right uh, polarized situation that we are told to believe is real, then these these are two opposites. We, we're looking at two opposites here. But it's not like that. And it's, it's so obviously not like that just by observing events. Instead of a polarity situation, you have more like a circle. And there comes a point when two points of that circle meet in the same mentality. 
And there you will find the mentality behind the establishment and you'll find the mentality behind the extremes of what call itself anti-establishment. Because fascism is not a race, it's not a country, it's a state of mind, it's a state of being, a sense of perception. And it's no good the extremes of the so-called anti-establishment using fascist tactics to then say we're fighting fascism. I mean, the scale of self-delusion is shocking. In, um, in Nazi Germany, the fascists sent out gangs of thugs to break up meetings of those who were trying to expose the fascism of the Nazis. They destroyed books of people that opposed them. They banned them from speaking. They were violent towards them. They, they are fascist tactics. And what do we have now in the so-called anti-fascist movement? We have these groups that call themselves uh, black blocks, where they wear usually black clothing, they're black masks. And other groups that call themselves different names, like Antifa, anti-fascist, believes in violence. What do they do? First of all, that mentality is what has taken over universities to ensure that anyone who goes there to speak saying what they don't agree with must be banned. And if the university won't ban them, and most of them do these days, then there is mass protest and abuse and sometimes violence as we saw at Berkeley. These are the tactics of the fascists. They are the tactics of those that abhor and despise freedom. Because funnily enough, freedom is not the freedom to only uh, hear what you agree with. Freedom is not the right of only one perception group to express their perception. Freedom sits back in amazement, can't believe it, can't be true. It is. Freedom is the freedom of everyone to express their opinion. And the freedom for everyone else is to decide what they make of it. Anyone that wants to ban other opinions different to theirs has no confidence whatsoever in their own opinions and their own views. They can't have. Because anyone who is confident about their view and their opinion will say, OK, have a go at it. Put another view forward. I don't mind because I'm confident in what I'm saying. But no, we must ban them. And this is a, a common theme. If you don't like it, censor it. And it's a cancer that's taking over the world, as is the idea that violence is an answer 
to anything. So in Hamburg, we had hundreds of police injured, because they're all fascists. Um, and we had lots of demonstrators injured. We had businesses attacked, smashed up. We had cars set on fire. Hey, whoa. Welcome to hell, as they called it. What has it changed? Nothing. It's just given the establishment these people claim to oppose. Still another excuse to increase the police state and to um, attack basic freedoms. And do you think the establishment would like an excuse to do that? Of course. And isn't it funny? Chancellor Merkel in Germany has been criticised since the violent protests for selecting Hamburg for the G20 summit because of Hamburg's reputation of having a lot of these types of people in their mists that believe in violence to bring about peace. Why, people are saying, did Chancellor Merkel choose Hamburg of all places, knowing what would happen? Why? Because she, and those that control her, knew what would happen. They want it. They want violence. Who remembers anything now about um, the G20 summit? Who, who remembers um, uh, all the great, great majority of peaceful protesters who went there to make their point without feeling the need to throw bottles? Nobody. No one's talking about that. No one's remembering that. It's all gone. The focus is the violence by little boys in short trousers. And a few girls, I'm sure. Years ago in Britain, there was um, a phenomenon, a very violent phenomenon in uh, football. Different clubs actually had groups specifically um, formed to fight similar groups attached to other football clubs. And so um, football fans and little kids and their dads would go out to a football match and this violent group attached to one football club would then go into battle with their like attached to the other team. And so we had violence at football matches week after week after week came uh, uh, pretty close at its peak to destroying the game certainly destroyed the enjoyment everyone going along now the point i'm making here is that these groups these violent groups attached to football clubs saying i support these and i support them they couldn't give a damn about football. They couldn't care less. But what football gave them was the ability to have distinct sides within a group of people and thus a fault line to have a fight. They didn't support the football club. They could care less about football. They just wanted a fight. And football was a perfect vehicle and I then look at these violent protesters with their black masks on 
do they really care about what they're talking about and what they claim to stand for? Do they really? Because if you did, you would want to do the most effective thing in support of what you believe in and what you care about. But instead, they're doing the thing that does the opposite. Now, of course, we have violent elements within the police. It goes back a long time. And they have to take responsibility too. And we have also infiltrators into this group and these groups um, that come from the establishment, that come from law enforcement, or what claims to be. Because they want the violence. I was uh, at the um, Occupy Wall Street protest for two or three days when I was passing through New York. And in among um, the protesters uh, were New York police infiltrators dressed as protesters. And one of them, while I was there, was, was identified and he just ran for it. Had his backpack on, looked like a classic protester and away he went, running behind the police lines, pursued by people, pointing out that he was an infiltrator. So these groups are infiltrated all the time. And who is behind some of these black masks? The people we can't identify. The answer, in a significant number of cases, will be the very representatives of the very establishment that these people claim to be fighting. Because they want the violence. But the mentality says the fascists are violent so we can be. That's the rationale for this. So you don't like them being violent? No. So what are you going to do about it? We're going to be violent. Oh, well, do a round of applause. Well done, you. Over here, ladies and gentlemen. So you don't like them bombing the innocent in Libya and Syria? No. Well, we must do it then. It's insanity. And it's also, I say, bordering on the criminal in terms of self-indulgence. Me, me, me. So it's really about if they found a mirror and looked in it honestly. It's not about what they're fighting for. It's me, me, me. Oh, we're fighting for justice. Oh, I hit that copper with a bottle. Oh, well done, mate. Have another beer. If it comes to something, when you have protesters, genuine protesters, peaceful protesters, protesting about other protesters, saying black block, go home and such. And, and there was another uh, a poster I was reading from a peaceful protester in Hamburg that said basically yes to protest, but no to activism without content. Exactly. Activism without content. The world changes when large numbers of people are persuaded that it has to change because of knowledge acquired. This establishment does not control the media for a bit of fun. It does so, and it's now trying to uh, censor as much as it can get away with the alternative media. It controls the media because it knows you have to control information to um, manipulate the perceptions of the population so they'll support what you want them to support and won't oppose what you don't want them to oppose. Information which changes perception 
which demands change as a result in large numbers is how the world moves on. What information do these people who think violence is an answer to anything, what information do they impart to anybody at these protests? None. But they do impart a perception. The perception that those that challenge the establishment are all violent, um, nasty people. And we need protection from the establishment against those violent, nasty people. They're driving people to the establishment. They're driving people to say, we need protection from these people. We want more police. Yes, take freedoms away. We've got to be protected from these people. They're doing exactly the opposite of what they claim to be doing. Why? Because put a mirror there. Look at it honestly. And it's not about what they claim to be fighting for. It is about them. And that which is peaceful and committed to uh, change through the communication of information that exposes the fake narratives of the establishment need now to focus on these people and root this out because it's gathering all over the world this violent anti-establishment nonsense. Why? Because that's what the establishment want. Hands all the cards to them. And so, if we're going to change the world for the better, it needs to be done from a, a direction of wisdom, 